I think I kind of hear you now. Wow. <laughs> I did it, man. I did it. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. Where are you at? I am uh, in California. Okay. Good to see you, dude. Good to see you. By the way, what are you, you driving? Are. I'm just curious. I was trying to do uh, the Hummer kind of like, you know, kind of cool looking type deal, but it's too windy. So I had oh. to get back. So I'll just shut her on down. Plus it needs a walk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, by the way, great show here in Reno a few weeks back, Wes. Uh, looks and sounds like you haven't missed a beat in quite a while. I'm curious, man, what's your favorite city to do a show in? Kansas City, Missouri. I, was, I thought that was going to be the answer. I didn't know if there were, you know, sometimes I, I grew up in San Antonio, Texas, and uh, and I spent 25 years there, and now I'm 23 years here on the West Coast. And sometimes it's it's a great place to go and visit, but I don't know that I would want to live there anymore because there's, uh, you know, ex-girlfriends and bad habits and, you know, crazy stuff that you do in your youth. That doesn't happen in Kansas City, or do you come in there, kick ass, take names, and get the hell out of Dodge? That's what I usually do everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, I got a great family behind me, so, uh, you know, I stick around for a couple days and then go back on tour and go on studios and just keep doing the rotational jam. That's cool, and I, I want to get to all that. You know, it's no secret that you've, you've been the uh, subject of controversy over the course of car uh, career, much like a lot of rock stars, right? I mean... I'm uh, interested to know, what do you do these days to try and rise above the BS? I mean, do you have a coach or somebody with you on the road to, you know, think, you know, try and keep things in line and, you know, keep you on a, uh, on a narrow path so you don't get caught up in the boredom and the monotony of waiting on sound checks and being in foreign cities and, you know, what goes along with that? Yeah, you know, you got to be able to just like, you know, say... I'll see it. Yeah, of course, man. I'm in a car wash right now. I'm getting heckled right now. <laughs> yeah, I can bounce, man. <laughs> you just got to, to let things go and uh, forget about them, you know? Yeah. So Dave, Matt, and Michael have been with you since, what, about 2014, something like that? Yeah, man, they're great guys. Uh, wonderful, amazing professional musicians with a lot of, uh, you know. Uh, what kind of dynamic? Just playing with, you know, uh, seasoned professionals like uh, Dave and Matt and Michael bring to the band. And do you guys jam to, uh, together often when not playing a show just to create new music or riff on different stuff or tighten up the set? Or how does life look like in that regard? Well, you know, um, it's really cool, but I mean, yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's, uh, it's, it's. You know, it is what it is. Um, you know, I wish we could uh, rehearse more, but, you know, everybody's got their own little, uh, their own little, uh, you know, their own little gigs going on all the time. So, you right. know, it doesn't always work out so great, but, you know, we all uh, get down and jam. I think we're going to jam tomorrow. So that's kind of cool. Nice, nice. So, you know, speaking of new music, uh, Welcome to, to Galvania was the last time we spoke. And uh, it was released just prior to the pandemic, pretty much shutting the entire world down. What's in store for later this year, maybe 2023, from a new music perspective from you and Puddle of Mud? Um, the record is basically uh, pretty much done. I just got to polish it a little bit up and, um, you know, and um, revise a couple of things. And, um, you know, I did a lot of work with uh, Doug Ardito and Christian Stone um, that used to be uh, playing with me and stuff like that. And uh, they had uh, basically saved a bunch of a bunch of songs that that uh, were recorded. And uh, I'm really happy about it. It was a little it was a little funky, but I'm glad that it was like put into like a musical vault. So it uh, takes a lot of weight off my shoulders. Yeah, no doubt, man. Um, you know, look, looking back at some of your biggest hits, like, you know, Blurry and She Hates Me and Control, and was there something that makes those stand out as unique as far as, you know, who you worked with to, to write the songs, structure the songs, produce the music um, that, that only happened on those songs, or were they all just lightning captured in a bottle, or... A lot of the good ones are really captured pretty quickly. Um, 
And sometimes it takes a little bit of time to uh, kind of uh, absorb and uh, massage the, the material. If it sucks, it's got to go. And if it's viable, it's, it, it'll stay. And a lot of the uh, fans, they kind of like really don't care. You know, like yeah. they want to hear some new jams, man. And you guys sounded great, by the way, the other night. Thank you for jamming. That was awesome. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. We had a great time. It was, it, that's a, that's a fun venue to, to play in for sure. They, they're pretty buttoned up there. They're su super solid pros over at cargo here in Reno. I advise any band looking to, you know, do a show here at the club level to, to really consider cargo. They're a good group of folks over there. Um, there was some talk a while back and I know I'm dipping into history here of you working with Fred Durst from Limp Bizkit on a movie kind of based on your life. And now with Fred being active again with the Limp Bizkit, uh, you know, t t touring thing, which is awfully funny. Uh, I've seen a couple of uh, excerpts from his shows. They're playing here on Sunday. Um, it, it, has there been any more discussion? Is any of that active again? Or is there room to continue that talk? Well, I'm sure that, um, you know, that it's going to happen, you know. But uh, we're a bunch of bunch of busy little dudes. And, um, you know, we're not spring chickens anymore. <laughs> right, so yeah it's uh just looking to find the time and um you know it, it it'll be a really freaking like magical type like movie just the way everything went down for biscuit the exact same thing that went down for corn and stained and puddle of mud yeah and, you know it's just everything went like wow you know because i was i was done you know i was trying to support you know i was getting ready to like you know be a bartender in new orleans so <laughs> yeah Fred Oh, man fred called and said yo man come to la and we're gonna we're gonna get this going so uh that Very dude's cool. incredible and uh, and definitely inspiring and uh he's he's wild and awesome man you know i think it would have to be difficult in the position that fred durst found himself in with limp biscuit getting as big as limp biscuit did for that period of time and then all of a sudden you know you have this nickelback or creed target on you that you become so big, you almost become a parody and people are, it's, it's easy for people to poke fun at you. Um, and, and I would think that would drive a lot of artists into complete depression, suicide, just giving up on their dreams, relying on their catalog and, and just getting out of music entirely. I thought it was brilliant for Fred and Limp Biscuit to, you know, kind of talk about this tour as the Limp Biscuit still sucks tour, right? Yeah, man. They, they don't suck. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. You still have a relationship with him, man. Yeah, I mean, he's a he's magic man, dude. He, um, you know, at the end of the, uh, you know, I just I said a little prayer and I thank God for everything. And I was done doing uh, music and and uh, all of a sudden the phone rang. And, you know, lo and behold, man, Mr. Magic Awesome, you know, Fred Durst was like down to down to sign a band and you know, and shoot, man, I mean, my, to him, everything, I mean, you know, I owe him a lot, man, he's really, really freaking. Yeah, did he help at all with regard to no, negotiating contracts to make sure that you would be able to get paid through the rest of your life from, uh, you know, the royalties and residuals from, you know, some of that early material, it was all over the radio, it seemed every hour you could hear another Puddle of Mud song on any given rock station in the entire country? Of course he did. I mean, he's the main reason that uh, everything, like, you know, everything happened, I mean, you know, and yeah. uh, throw my hat off to uh, Jordan Schur and uh, Danny Wimmer and especially like, you know, Universal and uh, Jimmy Iovine and, you know, it, it was just a magical, cool thing. And, you know, I was just, I was blessed. Like, yeah. it, right when I gave up, all of a sudden I was blessed, but the contractual thing you're talking about at that point, um, I really didn't, um, I didn't really, you know, I didn't really sick lawyers on them. You know, there was other artists they were trying to sign, but you know, they had their lawyers and stuff. And, uh, I was just kind of like, you know what, I'm just going to go with the flow. I'm like, I'm just going to ride this wave, you know, yeah. and it's been amazing, you know, amazing wave to ride on. And, uh, and, um, you know, just a, a monstrous amount of just amazing people that, um, that, you know, that helped out, including you, man, you know, like, it's just really cool, man. Well, I've always been a big fan, Wes, you know, we've been big supporters here in Reno of uh, you and your craft and your art. And unfortunately, 
and you know this, I'm not uh, just telling you anything new. A lot of baby bands, you know, they get chewed up in that machine. You know, they get so caught up with getting the label deal that they sell their souls and then they bust their ass out on the road for three to five years. They might have a couple of hit singles and they've got nothing to show for it, man. They're broke. They still owe everybody money. So you are definitely blessed to not be in that situation. I'm curious. Everybody sees, you know, the the stardom, the, you know, the rock star up on stage, the lavish lifestyle that people think rock stars always live. But if you could pull back the curtain a little bit and tell me what is a typical week in the life of West Scantlin look like when you're not on the road, you're not in the studio, you're not actively working on new material. What does a week or a day look like for you, man? Basically, I mean, I love writing music so much that it just engulfs my entire life. And, um, you know, my mom came downstairs in the basement. I couldn't play Eddie Van Halen solos. I couldn't play Eddie Van Halen at all. because He's freaking God rest his soul. But the dude is an amazing, miraculous person. And my mom said, you know what? You know, just write your own songs, man. You know, you get, you get pretty good at it, man. You know, yeah. you really do. Yeah, so sometimes there's a formula. I would imagine it might be difficult uh, on occasion to break that mold and, you know, and get out of the formula, do something that challenges the song a little bit, but doesn't stray too far away to keep it interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, just um, if it's inspiring to you as a songwriter when you're writing the songs, um, you know, and it just seems really freaking cool um you know just go with it you know yeah well i'm excited to hear what's coming next from you for sure man looking back at uh you know your seemingly fast rise to fame and i know it wasn't all that fast for you but to the outside world to the industry all of a sudden hey it's this new band puddle of mud there they've got a, a great song with control and then boom you're headlining all these big festivals um if you had it all to do over again What's one mistake you absolutely wouldn't make again or a piece of advice you could pass along to a younger band like the guys in Split Persona that opened the show here in Reno that you would say, hey, be wary of this. This is a pitfall that I see a lot of bands fall into. Don't do this. Well, you know, don't bite the hand that feeds you, you know, don't <laughs> don't get a little a little too buzzed and start talking about somebody that you, uh, you know, that was your mentor and, you know you know, guided you and stuff. Uh, that was a, you know, that was, that was ridiculously stupid. Yeah. Uh, yeah but you know, it, it's cool. You know, um, everybody like says a couple of things every once in a while. And, um, the other thing, I mean, you know, I really, sh I shouldn't have ever gotten married, man. You know? Yeah. I think it'd be difficult to have a life on the road and also try and, you know, handle a marriage, especially when kids are thrown into the mix and, yeah, but that's got to be brutal. That's got to be never, brutal. Uh, never get married, ever. <laughs> well, I'm sorry you had a bad experience with that. I, I got lucky and found one of the unicorns. They're, they're waiting to have a spot open where they can study her for uh, future generations, I think. I'm very, very happy you got lucky, man. Sometimes. <laughs> but, you know, in other, uh, you know, in other uh, areas, um, you know, it, it goes well. So, yeah. Well, I love you, brother. I, it was so great to be able to hang out and share the stage with you. You sounded fantastic. I can't wait to hear more new material. Wes, uh, you know, keep on keeping on. And I hope to see you back here in Reno very, very soon. Okay, man? Yeah, man. Reno rocks, dude. <laughs> it does. Th thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that. High five. High five. <laughs> All right. We'll see you soon, man. Take care. Bye -bye.